may be inundated with lenders tooting their own horns about the near record low mortgage rates we're experiencing as if they did it themselves. You hear it so often that you've tuned it out. Well, it's hard to appreciate where we are today if you don't look at the past. So let's take a quick look. In July of 2016, rates hit the lowest since 2012 at 3.44% with a cost of one half of a point. Today, average rates are three and a half with a cost of half a point. In December 2012, the lowest since Fannie Mae has kept records, rates were 3.35%. So they're really super low. 10 years ago though, in 2006, we had 6.41% annual average rate. At the turn of the century, guess what? And I don't mean 1900, 2000. It was 8.05% as an annual average. 20 years ago, in 1996, it was 7.81%. And 30 years ago, 1986, it was a whopping 10.19%. The all-time high was in October of 1981. Guess what it was? You got it 18.45% and not a half point cost, it was 2.3 point cost just to get that rate. That was the month that President Reagan and Pope John Paul were shot and the stock market reacted really negatively. So to put in this perspective, if you bought a house in October of 81 at $200,000 and 20% down, your payment would be $2,471.17 per month plus taxes and insurance. If you bought a $500,000 house with today's rates, your payment would be just $1,824.21, plus taxes and insurance, of course. The mortgage interest rates play a huge role in affordability, balancing out today's home values. My point is that taking a look back into history may give us a really good dose of what we need to really appreciate where we are today and help you understand why lenders keep shouting from the rooftops. Now, for minding your own business. Let's face it, we all get bombarded with emails all day long, including everything from business emails to personal newsletters, social media updates, and of course, enticing emails from someone on the other side of the world who claims to be the prince of some obscure country on the other side of the world that needs you to hold on to $1.5 million for them, it's totally legit, right? No wonder why people, our clients, ignore our important emails. Through all of that noise, we need to find an effective method to bring through and capture our prospects and clients' attentions. We just don't hear it anymore. Here are four best practices to abide by when writing emails that will actually get opened. Number one, keep it simple, kiss, and make it personalized. Your email should take no longer than a minute to read. Number two, create a stellar subject line. Well, what is that? How does it work? The stats show that personalized subject lines are 22.5% more likely to be opened. Number three, just be honest. Don't lie to people. You want to gain trust and credibility so that they look for your information. And even if they do open it, it's not good. They're not going to work with you. So number four, no product dumping. Just have a candid conversation. The goal is to cut through all the clutter and have them actually listen to you. Every scenario may require a slightly different approach when emailing a prospective client, but follow these guidelines and watch your conversion rates climb. Well, that's it for another edition of the Real Estate Insider Weekly. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Have a great week.